Charlie Craddock, my professor, who I met by chance, was a leading professor in the field of haematology. Probably day three after being diagnosed, he gave me the good news I had three years left to live, rather than I was thinking it could be only three months. I started saying, what can I do to help? And he said, let me get you healthy first. It might take a while, but I'm just in the middle of setting up a charity, and it was Cure Leukemia. Former England international footballer Jeff Thomas was diagnosed with chronic myelogenous leukemia in 2003. He took up cycling not long after and has been raising money for charity ever since. We found cycling is a great way of getting people from all different walks of life together. We come up with this ridiculous idea in 2005, or it was just six months into remission, of doing the Tour de France. <laughs> it's a bond when you do something like this, and uh, that's what sport does. The Tour 21 was founded in 2020, by which time Jeff had already ridden the routes of the Tour de France on four occasions. This year, he's doing it with 17 other amateurs, including Alan Dixon, who's taking on the challenge for his 14-year-old daughter, Olivia. For that to go up. He's lost three kilos since December as well, which is decent. Oh, it's it's Kenny! <laughs> In November uh, 2020, in the middle of the pandemic, Liv had gone for what we thought was a COVID test, only to be told that she actually had ALL, acute lymphoblastic leukemia, which was obviously a shock. Just to visually demonstrate what these kids go through, for every treatment that Liv has had in the last 18 months, she gets a bead. That's not all of them, that's the thing up to January. <laughs> when Liv was diagnosed, I was looking for something to do that would be not only cathartic for me personally, but also where we could we could give back. I went online and found this amazing Tour de France ride that Cure Leukemia had done last year. At first I thought it was crazy. Just, you know, the whole thing in general, the amount of cycling it is, I thought he was off his head. But personally for me, I think it's helped him to escape and focus on something that's better for all of us. Perfect. I think he's absolutely amazing for doing it and I think he'll smash it. After starting their adventure by island hopping in Denmark, the team have safely negotiated the cobblestones in northwest France. This week they start to climb and the Col du Galibier, the highest point on this year's route, and the legendary Alp d'Huez lie in wait. Alp d'Huez is an iconic climb, and when we've done it before, the, the crowds are already there. You know, it's such an iconic climb. You get the Dutch corner, all the fans there, you get the Irish corner, and numerous countries all the way up there, dotted up there. So it's, that is an amazing climb. I've got fond memories of that climb. But going back to the Calibier, in 2005, it was a day where it was 28 degrees at the bottom, and the mountain, more or less halfway up, started saying, you're not coming up here. It started to rain, it started to hail, it started to snow by the top. I was crying my eyes out because it was so hard. And it was just one of those moments where you change your thought process about what life's all about. By the time they reach Paris, the riders hope to have raised a million pounds for Cure Leukemia. Feeling inspired and want to take on the challenge next year, go to thetour21.com. Even if I have to crawl, I'll be on the finish line in Paris. I will definitely be on the finish line and I will be there with open arms to give my dad. <laughs>